Del's quite smitten with Miranda, isn't he? And um, calls a business meeting with Rodney in the kitchen, where Del says, um, I think she fancies me. And I think Rodney says, leave out, she's an intelligent woman. So Del gets him by the throat and, yeah, that's probably why she fancies me. And then Del gets a, tries to get a bit of advice off Rodney and Rodney, I think, says, just be yourself. And then they go back out into the, the lounge there and um, I think it's a funny moment, isn't it? Del smacks Miranda's bottom and says, fancy a curry and winks. And she just, she's a bit shocked, but she goes, yes, why not? And Rodney's face is a picture, isn't it? He's so shocked thinking, yeah. how the hell did that work? But then he tries to do it himself, doesn't he, in a, a cafe the next day and um, gets a slap for his trouble, which is which is the result you'd normally expect, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's the funniest part of the episode for me. Yeah, yeah, it is, definitely. <laughs> Fancy an Indian? looking for a six foot seven inch dwarf aged between 15 and 50 white male with oriental features <laughs> it's just so brilliant That's isn't it? It, yeah, yeah. And horses. oh no he was a white fella <laughs> he was african i think <laughs> and that and that sets up the one of the, the granddad's best line doesn't it where yeah we're, we're, is it the, the selling timeshare or something or we're, we're going into the holiday the, the Sorry, self-catering trade, aren't we? Yeah. And uh, Grandad then says, what, you got a Wendy ass? And that, after that, every time there's a funny line or a scene, they'd say, oh, we've got another Wendy here. Um, probably Leonard Pierce's greatest line, or certainly loudest laugh, isn't it, I think he ever got. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, but we're starting in a small way. Well, you got a Wendy ass? <laughs> Boy tricks Mickey Pearson and said, um, You just bitches on that when you scratched your bum. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, just now, you put in a 40 quid bid for an electric generator when you scratched your bum. <laughs> <laughs> He's winding you up. Now, my eighth place I put as wanted, um, which is the one where Blossom accuses Rodney of rape when he leaves the pub. Um, and favourite, well, one of the good moments for me is when Rodney's telling Grandad the next morning at the at the table, and he's talking about who Blossom was. And as he says the word Blossom, you can see Dell near to camera, can't you? Um, you know, sort of mime Blossom, you know, type of thing. In fact, he's in this suit. This is why I've got this on tonight. It's the he wears this in series three, doesn't he, as well? Um, so then Dell's on the wind up, then, isn't he? Of um, you know, pretending it's, it's rape and. Uh, did she call you my Peckham lovely? Pound. You call him my lovely, yeah. Um, you know, the case of the Peckham Pouncer and all that business as well. Um, and then Dell at the pub later on, he's with Boise and Trigger, isn't he? Gets a phone call from Grandad to say Rodney's gone on the run. And uh, Rodney turn, uh, sorry, Dell turns to Boise and Trigger and says, he's taking all the tin food, don't know what I'm going to do. And Boise says, I ain't got nothing in the freezer then. <laughs> but as Grandad says, a joke's a joke, but sometimes you take it too far. <laughs> when um, Del Boy told Grandad that he won the lottery and he cancelled his pension. <laughs> yeah, he went up west with his pension money, didn't he? Yeah, he won the pools. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't. And he's all modern champagne. And then realise never plays it anyway. No, it wasn't funny, Del. <laughs> I mean, there was I in a Soho nightclub drinking champagne with a bird called Camilla, and I suddenly realised I didn't even do the bloody pool. <laughs> and they're at the pub, Chris, aren't they? And um, Del's on his own. And, and, you know, Rodney says, come over, have a game of cards. And he deals, doesn't he, Reg, the cards. So he goes, Dad, Rodney, Kimasabi. For, for Dell, which I think is brilliant, like the Lone Ranger reference, isn't it? That mm, um, yeah. Oh, I love this episode. It's very. It's in my top two. I will reveal very soon. But yeah, I love that episode as well because it gets repeated a lot at Christmas for obvious reasons. Uh, you know, so many references. Three wise men bearing gift. We get a Wally with a disease. I love that line. Will I have to have blood tests as well? No, it's hereditary. It means it's passed on, not back. <laughs> Your most proper 
be the carrier. <laughs> Funny as well in the van, isn't it, when the, the police are stopping and stop him and they think oh you they know about that salmon or something and um it's quite funny how he says like a weekend of uh, 10 years ago a weekend uh, a fisherman got murdered and that's what obviously have a good weekend you know, <laughs> yeah 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 pull ahead both rodney what well, we're not going are we yeah come on we're okay you know and of course um, rodney sees the madman in the in the window doesn't he and that they're like you sure it wasn't a reflection which is quite funny yeah yeah that is good isn't it yeah sure it wasn't a reflection yeah <laughs> i've got a bit of a thing with this episode i don't know if you've got this book only fools and horses story by steve clark it's quite an old book no you said about it but what's an interesting fact then the interesting fact i think it's an interesting fact anyway this episode's got a missing scene, and I didn't know this until I've done, you know, we've, I've had a look at series three. It's a missing scene. It's um, basically it's the uh, country pub Village Green. So it's um, just says here, it's just before they go to the cottage. Mm -hmm. So it just says this is one of those idyllic scenes straight off a postcard outside the old pub. We have a couple of tables and chairs. The van is parked close by. At one of the tables, we have an old rustic type uh puffing on a pipe at the other table sit del and granddad del is still wearing his camel hair coat etc so del says del's liked in a cigar this is what it's all about ain't it granddad eh this is your real england granddad it's lovely ain't it and it's so clean and all and del replies and i'll tell you what shall i because the people out there have respect for their environment he throws his empty cigar packet away so that's obviously a joke isn't it uh, men went away in the war and fought and died for this granddad i know i almost did and Del says, what, you almost died? And Grandad, no, I almost went away and fought for it. So you can... You can yeah, yeah. Life, um, then Del says, oh, yeah, I love this life. This is what nature intended. Freshly baked bread, beer from the wood and honest food straight from God's good earth. Uh, and then Rod exits pub carrying a tray of drinks, pints. Uh, Rod to Del, they've never heard of a pina colada and they don't do pizzas. Del, don't do pizzas? Stone me. What sort of a dead and alive hole is this? And then Rod, it says, thinking this might offend the yokel, shh, to the yokel, morning. And then the yokel, staring in the distance, afternoon. And then Rod checks his watch, taps it. This deep sea diver's watch still ain't working right. So that's a reference from, yeah. I think, series two, isn't it, that? Yeah. And then Dell, leave off Rodney, indicates yokel. He's trying to tell the time by the sun. And Rod, but you, you, you can tell the time by the sun? Granted, but it's hardly bloody Tim, is it? And then Dell says... He's right and all to Yokel. Lovely weather for a bit of sheep shearing, eh? And Yokel, oh, ah, fine weather. Soon be turning, though. And Del's like, will it? And the Yokel, you mark my words, sir, before the night's out, there'll be a storm, the likes of which we've never seen before. There'll be <laughs> thunder that'll wake the dead from the sheep, the sleep, rain and flooding, and a wind howling so fierce you'd think it came from the mouth of Satan himself. And then Del and Rod look at each other and react. Grandad, it'll be good for the flowers, won't it? And Del gives him a damning look nearly done now and rodney says how do you country people know these things is it because the cows are all laying down or can you tell this from the clouds yokel turns to face rod we see as an earpiece which is connected to a radio no i just heard the forecast on radio four and rod <laughs> reacts and del says come on drink up what about you then what's your eighth place Mine's Who's a Pretty Boy. To be honest, I haven't seen this episode that many times, but I always remember the big gag at the end. The trotters replace at the Dick Canary at Denzel's yeah, while yeah. decorating, believing this happened while they were there, only later to discover that the bird was already dead, which is, of course, the biggest gag of all of it. Um, but, yeah, to be honest, I haven't seen it that many times. That's the only reason uh, that it's okay. my number eight about all over the place like a good one yeah i know that but when i woke up this morning he was dead <laughs> yeah because um kareem goes mad at del boy because her wedding cake got destroyed and she had to uh, cut a victoria sponge <laughs> and what about the time he offered to do the catering for us oh now don't bring that up honey please that was our wedding, Denzel! Hooky <laughs> Street Hooky Street